Hello and welcome back to the Profunctionist channel. So yes, this is why you clicked on the video. I got one. I got myself a PRS Silver Sky SE. So I've had it for about a week now and yes, I've been enjoying it very much. Uh, why did I buy it in the first place? Well, uh, I've, I've wanted to get a guitar with three single coil pickups for a while now and you kind of want to spend money in it because obviously you want to get the best you can. Um, I had did have my eye on the original Silver Sky at one point. Uh, I actually ended up getting my exotic instead because it's got the uh, the humbucker. Yeah, at that time I wanted a guitar with uh, the humbucker in the bridge position. Um, I have since been missing the two position sound. A kind of dire straits kind of sound, which I guess you can do on a on HSS setup uh, guitar. Uh, you can usually they have the the whole humbucker and the middle pickup, but you can get split. But I've just found whenever you split uh, a humbucker into a single coil, it doesn't tend to sound as good. So I kind of wanted to have the authentic just three single coil pickup thing going. Um, so that's one reason why I wanted that. I, want, I wanted uh, a guitar three single coil pickups. Uh, reason I kind of wanted this one as well. Why I got this one is I like John Mayer, uh, and I'm not gonna. I'm not only gonna buy a guitar because I like John Mayer. Uh, it's in conjunction with the other things. But I'm thinking if I'm gonna get something, then yeah, I'll, at least I'll get something that I know I'm gonna like the sound of. I've always been a fan of John Mayer's two and four position sounds. So uh, all of that kind of a. <laughs> His, his uh, four positions always been very good uh, and I knew that if, if I'm going to get his signature guitar it's going to sound good. So that's one reason why I got it. Probably the main reason or at least the, the reason that pushed me over the edge and made me bite the bullet on this thing was that it's currently on sale. So here in the UK they were priced at about £900 or just a little bit less than 900 I believe and they've now come down to about 600 Well depending which colour you get, this colour and the dragon fruit colour are actually depending where you go, about 700. I got this from uh, from Anderson's, which was actually 800, but they price matched. They're very good there at Anderson's, so uh, they're very helpful and they kindly price matched for me. So I managed to get it um, at the cheaper price of 700 pounds, well, 699. Uh, and I thought, well, now's the time to get it because I'm, I'm presuming that the prices are gonna go back up again. Uh, and a little birdie at Anderson's did tell me after I bought it that yes, the prices are going up. So I wanted to strike while the iron is hot and he confirmed that yes, the iron is definitely hot at the moment. So striking is a good idea if you want to get one of these on the cheap. So if if it's not too long bef after this video comes out, check these out online, see how much you can get them for. Hopefully you'll still be able to get them at a cheaper price. I'm not selling these to you, by the way, I'm just telling you that's the reason I got one of these. Uh, and if you wanted to get one, then you know now's a good time to get one. So no affiliate links or anything like that because uh, I have no affiliations with, uh, with any of the uh, guitar shops. Anyway, let's quickly run over some specs. Right, so quite a few videos on this guitar and a lot of them will will give you the specs I'll just quickly give you some some quick specs uh, anyway just because you're here might as well in case in case you haven't seen any of the other videos yet so uh, let's talk about woods so this wood the body wood is made out of poplar neck is maple very pleased to say that this has a rosewood board fretboard looks very nice Obviously, we've got the bird inlays here, very PRS. So we've got the tuners here. The difference between these tuners and the ones on the American version is that they don't have any locking systems on them. These feel fine though. They, they kind of feel like wood. I'm sure they're not. I'm sure they're just plastic, but they kind of have this wooden quality to them. Yeah, they're fine. They're nice and big. I like that. Obviously, we've got the headstock here, very uh, PRS shape, which originally I thought looked a bit weird with the uh, strap body. I've kind of got used to it now. I 
don't really care anymore. Um, we have the nut here, which is, I think, the usual PRS, at least the SE one. Uh, I think it's meant to be a synthetic bone nut, I believe is what it is. We also have this uh, truss rod cover here, which looks a little bit odd, and it kind of seems to colour match with the uh, the tuners here. Uh, slightly different to the kind of more... Not cylindrical. I, I can't remember my shapes, but it's a slightly different shape to the one on the American one, which I think looks a bit nicer, but that's fine. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, the neck is apparently slightly thinner here than the American one, very slightly. But the the big thing is the, the radius, how round the fretboard is. Uh, and this is, I believe, uh, seven and a half, where the original, no, sorry, eight and a half, and the original seven and a quarter. And I can't remember what the, uh, I can't remember what the uh, unit is because I'm filming myself. And obviously you forget things when you film stuff, when you film yourself. So basically it's a slightly flatter fretboard than the American one. It's fine. It's it's not a super flat fretboard. Uh, pickups are a variation of the uh, ones on the American version. The 635JM are the ones on the uh, American one. The 635JMS, I believe, if I've got that correct, are the ones we've got here. I think it was on the Anderson's video, at least with the neck pickup. It sounded a little bit thicker and bassier than the American one, which I... I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It just it just is. They both sounded good. Uh, hardware. So this one is pretty much the same as the American one, except this is a two-post uh, tremolo system as opposed to a six-post. Do you have a preference? I think I prefer the two-post personally, but I'm not too sure. I think I prefer the two-post. My uh, exotic there is a six-post, and the uh, tremolo feels a little bit stiffer I guess maybe that could be more the springs than anything else uh five-way switch with their kind of slightly different um switch top whatever you call that uh volume tone control for these two pickups tone control for this pickup which is what I really like some strats don't have any tone control for this pickup and then they tend to sound really spiky so I generally will have that wired I'll usually wire this tone up to be just for this pickup and then usually I'll turn it down a little bit to about seven or so we'll just just to cut take that top end off a little bit and just smooth and smooth it out a little bit uh, and I like having that extra tone knob there so it's out of picture there I like having that extra tone knob there so I'm glad it's on this one it's already wired to this one as well so I don't have to do that myself um yeah tremolo arm is a you just slot it in which I like one of my exotics more vintage you have to wind it in not not my not a massive fan of that to be honest, and this comes stock as being flat to the to the body. I've actually since modded it to be to float, so it kind of goes so it goes up as well as down. Should have a video on, on that coming out soon as well. And in a strange way, another reason why I bought this is because it comes with its own gig bag which I can just about get in camera. It's not the best gig bag in the world, but I kind of like the effort. And even though I'm probably not going to use it that much, if at all, I, it's kind of nice to have one. I don't know why, I just kind of like the free stuff. I guess it's technically not free. It's not, definitely not as nice as the gig bag you get with the American version of this, but it's nice nonetheless. <laughs> So some of the footage that I've added to this video were taken uh, while I was at Anderton's. Just uh, I thought I'd just film my first time playing through it. So I just managed to get a, a bit of footage of that and uh, and share it with you guys. Uh, I'm going to play through it a little bit now as well, just so you can get a, a kind of cleaner sound of what, what's going on. I'm going through my Rev D20. I do have some pedals here, which I may or may not use, 
But let's check out some of these pickup uh, controls. Let's start with the neck. Position four, so neck and middle. Position two, the neck and the bridge pickup. And the bridge pickup with the uh, tone up all the way. And let's try that all again, but this time with a bit of tube screamer action coming from the Behringer Vintage Tube Overdrive. Neck position. and middle. and middle. And bridge with a tone up all the way. Let's talk about some things I like and don't like about this guitar. All right, things I like, it just feels really nice to play. The footage of me in the uh, in 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 the guitar store playing this, I was there for for a, quite a while. It was it was just so much fun, just kind of trying the different pedal combinations and uh, through the amp that I tried, which is actually a bit of a surprise for me on that day. That was the uh, Blackstar St James amplifier. I'm now tempted to get one. I probably get the head and the, the two by twelve, but I, I'm tempted to get that amp. That amp and this guitar sounded really nice together, and the pedals as well sounded really good. It's that Strat sound I'm looking for. That kind of you know, it gave me some, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan vibes, obviously John Mayer vibes. I can do my Dire Straits thing. I like this slot in trim. I like that I can just take the trem tremolo arm and just slot it in. If I was to get my ideal guitar, it would have that for sure. Even though I like, like the vintageness of the uh, of the exotic, I, I do prefer slot in trims. Uh, I like this particular color, which is, I believe it's called stone blue. It says four colors, stone blue. Uh, there is a kind of reddish one called dragon fruit, which is also one of the more expensive um, ones it's still discounted, but more slightly more expensive. But my second favorite of the SE ones is the uh, Moon White, I believe it is, which on screen 
on when you watch it on YouTube looks very yellow. It doesn't look very white. And then there's also the green. I kind of like all the colours. The green kind of reminds me of Dire Straits in the 90s where the second guitarist, Phil Palmer, was using a green strat. If you watch the uh, On Every Street video, the Dire Straits concert from the 90s, he's got a green strat and I love the sound of that strat. It sounds so good. Especially with these, I think it's a two position that he uses and some of that sounds so good. So that's what that kind of reminds me of. Um, I went for this one because it's the closest thing to uh, Sonic Blue. You know, my, one of my dream guitars was like would be like a custom shot Strat by Fender in a kind of slightly aged Sonic Blue colour. Uh, it's a shame that this is a this isn't a Nitro Cellular's finish and it's not going to degrade as time goes by, which would have been nice. But it's still very nice. The neck. Unlike the American equivalent, is a satin neck, very smooth. So it's not lacquered. It feels very smooth. I like, I do like satin necks. Ever since um, I tried the John Petrucci guitar back in oh, years ago, now I end up getting one. Uh, I like those kind of satin slash unfinished necks, uh, and yeah, I do prefer them to lacquered necks. And compared to the American one, again, I do like the flatter, slightly flatter uh, radius, the slightly flatter fretboard. Uh, I didn't really notice ma a massive difference, but I like the idea that it's flatter and if I need to, I can get the action lower and there's less choking. I haven't really noticed any choking on this, I think. Yeah. But the main thing is that it, it just, it's just a joy to play. You can just play it for ages and it will sound and feel great. As long as you're plugging into a good, good enough amp, it will sound great. Things I didn't like about it so much, um, with, with the trem, as much, I do like it. There is a slight, when you when you kind of just move it slightly, not actually using it, it does move a little bit. Similar to, if you've seen the video I did on, on this guitar where the tremolo arm, when you wind it in uh, to where it was tightened, it was still moving a little bit. It's kind of the same thing on here, except it's a slot in tremolo arm. I could tighten it. There is a grub screw here for me to tighten it with a with an Allen key. And I've tried that and it doesn't seem to do too much. So maybe I might experiment with the uh, the uh, the tape that I had that I put round on, on this guitar here, which which fixed it completely. This is a different system, so it may not work on this because there's no uh, there's no thread to kind of block up. But it might just make it thick enough to, to stop it from moving inside. But we'll see. It's not a massive, not a massive problem. Uh, the one that was a bit of an issue was, I say an issue, it wasn't a massive issue either, but a bit more so, uh, with the knobs, at least with this volume knob and this tone knob, this one wasn't too bad, but when you turn it, you could see that, it, you could see that the uh, uh, the post inside the, inside the knob wasn't straight because it was, you could see it kind of, well, I'll, I'll put some footage on, on the screen at the moment so you can see what I'm talking about. And I did end up going back to Anderton's potentially to swap the guitar, uh, but it turns out the other ones that they had there all ha all did this. So I'm not sure if it was to do with the batch or if they're all like this or if it's just a really common thing. But and it didn't really affect the playability. But when you look at it, it kind of you you notice it sometimes, and it's that little kind of you know your OCD might kick in if you're that kind of person, and you might not particularly enjoy that side of things it's a it's a fit and finish thing not it doesn't affect the playability so much but it's just more of like an you know something that's you're you're aware of it and then therefore it kind of bothers you for some reason uh so i took it to anderson's they unfortunately couldn't do anything about it uh but when i did i decided to keep this one this is the one i tried in the video that you saw of me playing in anderson's uh, I was w walking through their expensive room and was chatting with one of the, the staff there and we got chatting about guitars and I mentioned this issue to him and he said, oh, let me have a look at that. And then he you know, managed to get this off and did a little kind of finag finagling, is that the right word, with his, with his pliers and managed to kind of fix it to some extent. Uh, and yeah, it's fine. And you know, it, was, it ended up being a worthwhile journey. Although when I did get home again, uh, I did notice actually when I, I took it to a jam night that evening. I went straight there afterwards. I noticed that this when I when I when I would sh shake it, it would start to wobble. Uh, turns out that uh, when I when I took the uh, the cap off, when I took the knob off there, 
it needed to be screwed back in again. It had kind of come loose and I had to screw it in. But that's fine. And I can live with it. It's not a massive deal. I've, I've got a friend who's got the American PRS who said he's had a couple of fit and finish issues with his American one. Um, but as I said, not a deal breaker, but it is it is what it is. Uh, and um, yeah, it's fine. So it's something, I guess, I, I don't know if I can put it in the, in the don't like category. I, it's not that I don't like that this doesn't have locking tuners. I just prefer to have locking tuners. Uh, this guitar does, although to be honest, I'm not so keen on the locking tuners on, on the exotic. I may at some point swap these out. I may not. It, I don't know. I don't know if you can get the the PRS ones, or maybe I'll just get some other ones that I can um, that that lock differently. My favourite ones are the ones on my Petruccio, the Music Man, the uh, Charla ones, and they they yeah, they're, they're kind of my favourite ones. I do like those ones. Um, I can't remember how the PRS ones work. I don't know if they're easier or, or to use or not. But the ones on the uh, on the on the Music Man guitars are really easy to use, which is why I like them. Um, so it's not really a not like. I understand it brings the cost down, so that's fine. Um, another thing that's not not a massive thing is that the the, trem, the tremolo wasn't floating when I first got it, which is fine. John Mayer prefers it not to float. I prefer it to float. It's no big deal to get it to float. So. Yeah, I've 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 done that now. Um, yeah, keep keep a. I guess this is what I'm supposed to say. Subscribe to the channel to see my video on how to make this this uh, float. If you've got a guitar like you know similar to this, um, I've already filmed some of that, so uh, that should hopefully be out soon. Um, and the only thing I'm not so keen on is the gig bag. I like the fact that you get a gig bag, but the gig bag itself is not too great. There's nothing inside. Um, the gets inside the gig bag to stop the neck from going bang like you do in say uh some of the more expensive gig bags like the mono ones which is what i tend to use anyway so if i was to take the guitar out it'd go in the mono bag i just like having a free gig bag when i get when i get a guitar um again it brings the cost down uh, so it's not a massive deal and uh yeah, so it's, there's actually not much to not like. I just had to kind of scrape the bottom of the barrel to get that list together. But yeah, anyway, that is John Mayer PRS Silver Sky SE, which I've just recently bought. I may do a, long, a slightly longer term review. Um, oh, actually, one more thing that's realised while looking at this. I don't know if you were able to see this, but when I took the plastic off of the scratch plate, I do get this, these little kind of... I don't know if you can see them if they come up on the uh, right there. Does that come up on the video? There's one there. There's one here as well. I'm not sure if that if that comes up on the screen, but it's. So I think it's bang the microphone there. It's uh, it's as if the plastic is still on and you've just made a little hole in it as it and you need to rip the rest of it off. But I'm not sure if that is the case or not. I don't think so. I mean, I've seen. I'm, I've taken the plastic off as far as I can see unless there's bits of plastic that I have missed somehow anyway again it doesn't affect the playability I guess it gives it character to some extent <laughs> What you think about the Silver Sky? Is it? It, it was. It was a bit of a polarizing guitar when it first came out, the original American version. Uh, how do you feel about it? I remember seeing it for the first time. I wasn't so keen on it at first. I think from a looks perspective, I did try one eventually and really liked it. I wasn't sure about this kind of scoop here, but it's actually kind of useful when you're. It kind of feels nice to be honest. I quite. I quite like it now. It looks a bit weird on. On on film at first but it kind of doesn't look that bad now that I look at it again um, would you be interested in getting one of these for about 600 700 pounds uh, I'm sure it's cheaper in other places as well but yeah it's currently on offer here in the UK so if you are interested you know, check them out at, you know at some guitar stores and uh, yeah let me know what you think Silver Sky is it is is it a, is it a proper strat is it something different and uh, yeah, just, just let me know what your thoughts are in the in the uh, in the comments below. 
Uh, and any questions as well, let me know as well, and I'll hopefully get back to you as soon as possible. Anyway, this, this video's probably going on for a bit too long, so let us end it there. Uh, I hope you're well, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.